Do your zoom in transitions look like this? Do you want them to look like this? Let me show you how to fix that. But before I start, hi, my name is Peej, let me not waste your time. This video gets progressively more complex as it goes on, so I suggest that you watch my AMV Basics tutorial and my Fusion Basics tutorial if you haven't already. I also must warn you that I talk super fast and that this isn't quite a tutorial, but more of a rundown of how I do my scales. When I want to use a scale in transition when I'm editing, I've learned that the best way to utilize it is when it makes sense to zoom in on the scene. Otherwise, I would default to a zoom out or a slide. The way that I'm going to start off the zoom is by mapping out my clips in different layers. I'm going to have each clip here last for one second, and the way I'm going to do that instead of cutting them is by compound clipping them or pre-comping this footage separately and then shortening them down. Next, we're going to put an adjustment clip above each of our clips. If you don't know how to get an adjustment clip, you're going to go up to your effects library, go to toolbox, effects, adjustment clip, and drag it on top of your clip. Then you're going to take the clip and put it in your media pool to fix the frame rate and then put it back on top of your clip. In the first adjustment clip, we're going to go into Fusion and put a transform node on our graph by grabbing it from the toolbar and connecting it to our graph. Then we're going to keyframe the size at the start of the clip and at the end of the clip. The last keyframe of the size, we're going to change the value to 2. Now if we play this back, we have a very linear zoom motion on our clip and the way we fix that is by adjusting our spline graphs or our motion graphs. I'm going to open up the spline graph by hitting the spline tab at the top right, going down to the tab and check marking the box that says size, and hitting this button to fit all the keyframes into the spline viewer. I'm going to highlight these two keyframes and hit S on my keyboard to smooth them out. And then we're going to make an ease end curve by holding down the box on this handle and dragging it down. Then we're going to drag this handle to the right so we get this kind of ease end curve. If you think your zoom in feels too long, you can shorten the distance between the keyframes to make a faster zoom, but I generally try to keep my motion graph to the original one. Now we're going to turn on motion blur by going to our transform settings tab and turning motion blur on. These are the settings that I use. I usually just click around a couple times. Now we have this, which is all right, but we're going to fix it later. For the second adjustment clip, we're going to go do the same thing by adding a transform, keyframing in the same places, but instead of having the starting keyframe value go below one, keep it at one and have our ending value end at 1.2 to 1.4. By not having our size value go below one, we are minimizing the change chances of showing mirrored edges or motion tile in our clip. It just doesn't look good when these edges are showing, so thank you Rostin for the scale values. Now we're going to fix our graphs in the spline graph by going through the same process of smoothing our keyframes, but this time making an ease out curve. What I ended up doing here, contradictory to what I just said, is decreasing the starting value slightly to around 0.9 to 0.95 in order to make our motion look better. Since I zoomed out a little bit more, I'm going to go down to edges and hit mirrored so we won't have this little black outline around our footage. Lastly, to finish it off, we add motion blur. Now if we play everything back in the edit page, we have this, which is our very basic zoom in transition, which doesn't really blend well with the scene, so now we're going to improve it. The first thing we can do to improve these clips is match up the scenes with 0.2's position. In the first adjustment clip, you can see when I have the transform node highlighted, there's a red L which controls the position or center point of the footage, and then there's the green X, which controls the anchor point or pivot point of the footage. What I'm going to do here is move the pivot point so that it is mildly centered, but is also on 02's face. Now on the second adjustment clip, we're also going to move the pivot point, but maybe not as intense as we did on the other clip. I may also shift the clip over slightly. So now that we've adjusted everything, hopefully we can see that the zoom looks better since it lines up with our face better. I do see that we have a little bit of motion blur on our zoom now, which I'm going to hide with some black bars. To add black bars, I'm going to grab another adjustment clip and put it above everything, so I may move up a couple tracks. In the adjustment clip, we're going to go and grab a merge node, then a background node, and connect it to the green input. Then we're going to go grab the rectangle mask, connect it to the blue input of the background. And on the viewer, we could adjust how far we want the bars to extend. Now I'm going to put it about here. Now when we invert the mask, you can see that we have black bars. Another way we can have the whole scene look better is by twixing or slowing down our clips and retiming them. I'm going to skip past the part where I twix the footage because I already made a fake twixer tutorial. You guys can go check out. And the process I'm going to use for retiming my clips was taught to me by Frostbitten's tutorial. You should also check out. So since we compound clipped our footage, we can actually open all that up in its own timeline and make adjustments. Just right click the compound clip and select open a new timeline. Then here, I just duplicated my footage, disabled the original clip, and locked it so I can twix the duplicate clip above it. When I have my clips chopped up, instead of rendering in the delivery page, I can render in place here and select the video settings I want, and choose a file where to store it. Here I put my slow-mo settings and I move the clip speed to around 25% speed and then compound clip that footage. Then I grab the fusion comp so I can retime my clip. Since the clip only lasts one second, I'm going to extend the fusion clip to last only 24 frames and view it. In the fusion comp, I'm going to add the compound clip I just made and then a time stretcher node so I can retime it. I keyframe at the start and the end of the footage, changing the keyframe value with the frame number I want the clip to start and end on. I decided for the first clip I did not want to change the spline, but only using the last section of my Twix clip. On my second clip, after I Twixed it and I was retiming it, I changed the curve so it starts out fast and then slows down. I also started the clip from a different section to match up with Zero 02's facial expression and to hide any artifact warping caused from my Twixter. Then when we go back in the edit page, make sure that you are viewing the start of the compound clip where the retime footage is. Now the scene looks much smoother and nicer, but there's still a small portion of motion tile I see, so I'm going to hide that with the blur. I'm going to add an adjustment clip and cut it down to 8 frames long and put it over the cut. 
I usually use BCC Lens Blur from a plugin, but here I'm just going to use it to focus node. I keyframe the blur at the start, the middle, and the end, both sides having zero blur and the middle having a blur amount from 15 to 20. And then I also have the bloom turned down a lot. I also changed the curve of the blur so it eases in and eases out. And then the last thing I did was add sharpness and the color correction. I'm not going to show you how to make a color correction in this video, but hopefully I can make a video in the future. But for my sharpness settings, I first add a sharp node with the intensity to 0.2, and then I put an unsharp mask and have the value around 0.5. What I didn't do for this scale transition is add a shake, but it also depends on if you want to use one or not. Another nice thing to know is that when you're playing back your footage in the edit page, it might be very slow on the playback. So what you should do is disable some adjustment clips that aren't very needed for the playback. For example, by turning off the sharpness layer and the blur layer by hitting D on the adjustment clip. But yeah, this is the process I do to make what I believe is the best looking zoom in transitions. If you have any more questions or suggestions on videos I should do in the future, please let me know down in the comments. If you would like to join the Resolve AMV community discord, the link is down below where a bunch of people can help you out as well as my own discord server you should think about joining but other than that subscribe and have a good day this video is so scuffed like i re-recorded a bunch of times and i just could not figure it out on the day this might be posted i'll probably be graduating and i'm probably gonna be even more busy and i can't post any more videos so i was trying to get this out really quick but as you can see the quality went down so i don't know if it's worth it